We'd like to thank those who are sponsoring this week's Drusha, Debbie and Rabbi Barry Greengart, in memory of Rabbi Hyman R. Friedman, Haraf Chaim Rafael Ben Yamtov Lipman, Zichron Levracha, who was the father of Debbie Greengart and Chena Spalter, and his yurt site is the ninth of Kislev, and also in memory of Rabbi Seymour Spalter, Rav Simcha Ben Yitzchak, Zichron Levracha, the past husband of Shana Spalter, whose yurt site is the 15th of Kislev. Thank you to the Green Guards. Both of their neshamos should have a leos. Marsha and Yitzkasten sponsoring Zechron Nishmat's Yitz's father, Rav Shimshin Dov Ben Menachem Mon HaKohen, Zechron Levracha, whose yurt site is this coming Tuesday, the 15th of Kislev. Thank you very much. His neshamos should have an aliyah. And Ellen and Larry Korb to commemorate the upcoming yurt site of Larry's mother, Mini Korb, Mina Shifra Bas Yisrael, Zechron Levracha. Thank you very much, and her neshama should have an aliyah. If I may just mention for a moment, I, I never had the privilege of meeting Rabbi Spalter, but actually I, I remember the other three individuals whose uh, yard sites are being marked. Um, Mrs. Korb, of course, uh, passed while I was already involved uh, rabbinically with the shul, uh, but I remember from my own childhood both... Uh, or I remember, I remember Mr. Kasdan. I remember, I remember Mr. Kasdan. A love of shalom, zechron levracha, from my childhood, and I remember Rabbi Friedman. Um, I was connected to the shul. Uh, I don't think in my childhood, but I was a little bit older. I was a student in the yeshiva at the time. I remember all three of them, and um, if if I may just say for a moment, they were all people who even in their old age, and even when things might have been more difficult, it was quite apparent that the ability to connect to shul and community and Yiddishkeit was something that was so, so very important to each of them. I, I don't want to belabor the point, but I have uh, really specific images in my mind for each one of them. And um, it's certainly no surprise that they each still still see their descendants so intimately involved with shul and community and uh, all of their families. But uh, the Green Guard, Spalter, Kasdan, and Korb families should, and just their conduct and the conduct of their children and grandchildren should uh, really serve as a tremendous uh, source of merit for each of these people's neshamos. And uh, thank you to each of you for allowing us to participate in remembering them. There's a very there's a very interesting episode at the beginning of this week's Parsha. And when you think about it, when you put together the different uh, Midrashim and Talmudic sources, it's, it's really a packed episode. Yaakov Avinu is on the run from his brother Esav. He he vayifgab amakom he uh, happens upon, upon a place, he goes to sleep there, and he has this remarkable dream. This, of course, is the famous dream of the ladder and the angels. And he wakes up and he realizes that this was a sacred place in which he slept. There's a lot of Midrash about this. And of course, by the way, in the dream, God gives him remarkable assurances that God will protect him and God will look out for him. There's a medrash that he had kfitzas haderach. He his he arrived at the spot of the Temple Mount far earlier than he should have, and there's a whole discussion that the Temple Mount moved to him. Complicated, complicated topic. That's one thing that's striking. Uh, the Gemara learns vayifga b'makom that he happened upon the place. The Gemara actually says that vayifga could be a language of tefila, of prayer. And the Gemara says that this is where Yaakov institutes the prayer of Mariv. So, and of course, he has this remarkable uh, vision and, and the ladder and the angels and God will take care of him. It seems to be a lot to pack, to, to pack into one moment. Did it, did it really have to be that the Kfitzah Saderach in association with the base of Mikdash, the shortening of his path in association with the temple, would specifically be in the context of his instituting Mariv, and is there a reason that 
he merits Kfitzes Haderech in terms of traveling to a sacred place, and Avram Avinu, for example, doesn't merit the same type of Kfitzes Haderech. It just seems to be a lot floating around in this one story, one episode. And the Sfas Emes shares <coughs> a very powerful idea. The Sfas Emes explains that the reason why Yaakov Avinu merits this Kvitsa Saderach, <coughs> that the Beis HaMikdash essentially came to him, the reason why he merits that <coughs> was because of his impassioned prayer. And because he related to God in this difficulty, he found a way to connect to God within the difficulty, he was able to make it so that the place of his prayer was a place of great sanctity, beyond the focus of his prayer. Externally, the place became a place of great sanctity. The Sfas Emma says that this shows you, we've act, we actually said a similar idea a while back, but it's so important in these times. Sfas Emma says that this shows you that if a person focuses and thinks with a spirit of sanctity and devotion to God, God will help them feel connected. Svasema says it's not a coincidence that this remarkable episode happens in the context of davening Mariv. <coughs> Mariv, of course, is the prayer of the nighttime. That means there's no light. There's no, there's no clarity. There's no feeling, there's no built-in feeling of, of positive and spirituality. None of that. So if a person can find the presence of God metaphorically speaking, within their darkness, <coughs> then that means they're really searching. And if indeed they're really searching, God will bring them sanctity. Svasama says that's also shot in the Pasuk, in Yeshaya, Shalom la karov v'larachok, that God extends his peace close and far, near and far. Svasama says that the point of the Pasuk is that God wants to connect to each and every one of us. <coughs> and sometimes we find ourselves in situations that we feel very close to God. And of course, the fact that we feel that closeness, that we feel that things are going our way, that, that of course fosters this sense of shalom, of peace, of connectivity. But the Sfas says that when we feel distant from God, that also can foster that feeling. Because when we feel distance from God, we need to find Him. And of course, there are many people who when they feel distant from God, they shrug their shoulders and they walk away. But there are many others that when they feel that distance, they feel the need to reach out further and connect more. And actually, in retrospect, that feeling of distance is a blessing. I think this idea is very, very significant to think of in these times. Many of us don't feel comfortable going to, to gatherings of tefillah, of prayer, and are, are still davening at home. And, and everyone has to make their own decisions, and many, many times that is the absolutely right decision based on a person's own medical circumstances. People who feel that way should keep on doing that. And of course, it, it, there's a certain inspiration that we have, thank God, and shul with others. You know, you certainly think of, thank God, we have merit, we have a beautiful sanctuary. People can be inspired by the very room, by the people in the room, by the, 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 the sounds in the room, by the, the numbers of people in the room. All these things can be inspiring. And there are many, many people in our shul who haven't davened with a minion since March. And surely there's a, there's a feeling of a distance. And that's very difficult. And then there are other people in shul, of the shul who are comfortable gathering with minyanim, maybe outside, maybe other contexts, and they, they're not as comfortable coming to shul. And that's fine. People should make the decisions that are right for them. 
and it's nice they have they have each other they have a minion but they don't it doesn't feel like being in shul and then to be very candid even in shul uh, we're not sitting the way we normally sit we have masks on even the format of davening is a little bit different we certainly don't have it I, how how much do i miss i'm sure so many others miss you know the, the beautiful singing in show when we bring back the Torah out of Shabbos morning. Loud voices, Kedusha. We don't have that. So all of us, in one way or another, feel a certain deficiency right now. Something's missing. But I'll be candid with you, at least from my personal vantage point. My guess is I'm not the only one who feels this way. I feel a little bit of what the Sfas Emes is talking about when I'm in shul. I was sharing it with someone the other day. I look around, and you know, you think of all the reasons a person normally comes to shul. There are social reasons a person comes to shul. There are uh, culinary reasons a person might come to shul. There are maybe social pressure reasons a person might come to shul. Who knows? The bottom line is, anybody who's coming to shul now, is coming for one reason and one reason only. They're coming because this is the place that they want to daven to Hashem. And it might be a little bit inconvenient, and it might not be exactly as we hope it to be. But there's something so inspiring about that, so meaningful about that. It's true. We're not having the singing that I like to have. It's true. We're not having the large room that we like to have or the large occupancy within the room. But you have a much smaller group of people coming for no other reason than to connect to Hashem. And in a sense, I, I, I feel that creates its own unique sanctity. That devotion creates its own unique sanctity. And the devotion can be felt for people who are making an outside minion, even though it's cold outside, and even though it's it's complicated and this and that, and they're figuring it all out because this is how they want to connect to Hashem. And a person who's davening in the privacy of his or her own home is still trying to make the most of their davening. They're trying to do what they think is right for their circumstances. They also can connect to Hashem and are connecting to Hashem. So this is this idea of the Sfas Emes, that it's not a coincidence that Yaakov Avinu merited the Beis HaMikdash coming to him, specifically when he strove to Davin Marth, when his life was utterly upside down, and he strove to find God within a, such a dark moment of his life. It's not a coincidence that he's the one who institutes Marv. We should merit in our own challenges and the challenges that so many of us are experiencing now should end soon. But nevertheless, we should merit that when we have these challenges and we still strive to connect to God in a meaningful way, we should merit to feel an added inspiration, an added sense of connection. May all our tefillos be answered speedily in our day. And may we too, like Yaakov Avinu, maybe sooner than it would have been, merit to be davening to Hashem in the place of great sanctity, the spot of the Beis HaMikdash. Have a wonderful Shabbos.